Good morning and welcome again to Paul T's World in the magnificent month of May. As you can see behind me, everything is in flower. Now I've just been away for two weeks and the difference in the garden in the two weeks that I was away, that's the last week of April and the first week of May, is tremendous. I was relaxing on a yacht in Greece, in the Ionian Islands. So I'm really excited to show you what's in flower in my garden in northwest England. As you'll remember from the April video, this Amelanchia was in glorious flower in the early part of spring. But now behind it, we have the Cherokee. This is a dogwood and it has never flowered this well before. It has lovely leaves later on in the year, tinged with red. But now it's got these glorious white bracts. It's really nice to have a showpiece plant in the middle of the garden. Let's see what's in this border. I call this the long border as it lines the whole length of the front garden. The rhododendrons had a tough time last year because we had the drought in the middle of the summer. This one's in flower, of course, and the one next to it is always earlier. And we saw that in the last video. With rhododendrons, you can actually take off the spent flowers if you wish. And you see the buds down below there? You can just snap it there and pull those off if you wish to tidy up your rhododendron. Of course, it's not necessary. The contorted hazel now has lost its catkins. There we are. But the lovely fresh greens of April and May are absolutely gorgeous. The Crimson King Maple has these lovely leaves. You can just see the reddish color showing through backlit with the morning sun. It flowers really nicely, but earlier in the year. I think I missed it in the last few weeks. In this wilder area back here, we've got some more of those bluebells. In fact, many of them are over. Oh, and also Solomon's seal. There we are, we've got the little flowers hanging down, little bells. A rogue foxglove. They grow everywhere in the garden. Oh, some more Solomon seal down there. The Pittisporum. It's grown beautifully this last few years. And the Red Robin. I love the way the darker colours are matched by this Drummondii maple with its lovely light leaves. And we'll just come down to a plant here. Do you remember I talked about the Loropitalum? I had it in the back garden and it was being swamped by some of the larger plants. And so I dug it up and moved it into the front garden where it was sunnier. But unfortunately, as we all know, we had a fairly harsh winter in Britain this last year. So look at my Loropitalum. I knew it wasn't particularly hardy, but I was confident in my garden by the coast, it would be okay. But was it? <laughs> <laughs> Judge for yourself. Oh, my Loropitalum, it was looking fabulous after I transplanted it here. The leaves were gorgeous, but it just could not take that winter we've just had. But what could take the winter are the deciduous azaleas. Look at this. Now they smell really nice, the deciduous azaleas. Oh yeah, that smell is really lovely. If you haven't got deciduous azaleas, you must get one or two. They can grow in a pot if you haven't got ericaceous soil. And I'm going to go straight over to another couple of ericaceous azaleas. 
Just look at the vivid colours of these. Let's just see if this smells as well, this scent. Yeah, it's got a lovely scent. There we are, the deciduous azaleas. What a splash of colour in the garden. And the evergreens as well. Evergreen azalea here, white one. But I love the colour of these, the deep colour and the reds. Gorgeous. Not sure what to do with this rhododendron, but I just can't seem to get it to grow nicely with the dark green leaves. Oh, look at this, there's a bud there. Right there. So it's not flowering that well, and also it's got the chlorosis, maybe. So if you have deciduous plants with the yellowing, maybe it needs sequestered iron, but I haven't been successful with this. It's just not performing. Does it have to go? I mean, this bed is gorgeous with the azaleas, so perhaps I could do with something in the middle there that also stands out. Now, as we know, we've got our male Robin here who likes to follow me round the garden. And he has had chicks, haven't you? Three chicks fledged. And I saw the first chick yesterday. They fledged while I was away. And behind this azalea bed is the lilac Kim. Now, last year, this lilac Kim flowered and centered beautifully. Oh yeah, it's strong again, the scent from this uh, lilac and just in front are the new buds of the peony. I've got a little row of peonies here that we saw in another video early on in the year, just showing them coming up. Here we are, some more. Now this is a borage, self-sown. Not in the right place, but I want to leave it because the bees love borage. So there is the long border at the end of the front garden and I'll just back up here to have it framed with the dogwood and there's our dogwood and I've just noticed here at the base of the dogwood is a little oak tree <laughs> would you believe it there we are a cute little oak tree just look at that Oh, I love this sort of thing. Obviously, I'm not going to let it grow here, but I will dig it up and put it somewhere else. Beautiful oak tree. And from the oak tree, let's move over to the hydrangea bed. Let's see how it's doing now. Obviously, it's not just hydrangeas. I've got the paniculata hydrangeas, and I've got azaleas, and interspersed with the hookahs. Just coming into flower. And of course, hostas. I really like hostas. So that is what I'm doing with this bed. I'm going to have, I say going to have, I do have the main paniculatas through the center of the bed, azaleas bordering the edge and I'll probably put azaleas down here as well so they're both sides oak leaf hydrangea quercifolia a couple of years old now And of course, as you will have noticed, we've got a wedding cake tree here. There are a few different types of wedding cake tree, and this is the Controversa Variegata. It has nice tiers to the right, nice tiers below, but above the tears are not so good in this direction because I had two large shrubs here and one of them was a Ceanothus, California lilac, and it was dying. They are short-lived, but that was particularly short-lived, so I dug it out 
And let's go round and have a look at this bed from the other side. Let's have a look at this bed here. I call it the pathway bed. I have names for all the beds because really there are so many different beds. It uh, makes it easier to name them. And just before we look at that here is a choice here because there was a very large choice here right here next to the Ceanothus that was there. I did take the choice here out but it's very difficult to take a whole choice here out because they do send suckers along. Coming along nicely this bed, I do like the hostas interspersed, but obviously some of them are not quite right. This hosta is actually bigger than this azalea and we'll swamp it. And we've got the wall at the back with a nice red azalea, aubrecia and trailing flocks, creeping flocks. Now I won't be talking about this just now, but just as we're passing, here are the canners that were in the garage over the winter. There's the garage. It's uh, not an integrated garage, so it does stand alone and can get cold. But these two canners have survived. This one is Pretoria and this is the Stuttgart. Started to send up another one here, but a, a very late frost has just nipped it there. Squelchy, but that's all you need. What have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six shoots at the moment. I'm sure there'll be more. That is absolutely plenty. Lots here. So I'll have to dig those out and rearrange them because I want to give them a lot of goodness. Now then, where's the robin taking us now? Oh, the robin's just pointing out that I need to be doing some weeding. I've got a dandelion there. Oh, lovely, that's going to look fabulous when all those paniculatas are out in a month or so. And on the other side here, the candy tuft gave a great display earlier on in the year. I will now just cut these back. Now that they're over, literally get shears and just cut them back. Cut it back as you like. I love the way it's tumbling over the pathway here. Good thing about candy tuft, take it back as far as you like and it'll come back again and flower for you next year. Are you onimus? I really like these. They give a splash of colour all year and it flowers as well. These are little flowers. Little candy tuft growing up through it. My hydrangea cuttings coming along nicely. There they are. And of course the lace cap hydrangea. Macrophylla, big leafed hydrangea. There we are. There's the flowers just starting to form. And right behind it is the glorious variegated Wygela. Very vigorous. Osteospermum. Don't they look lovely tumbling over a wall? Now it seems to me there are two types of Osteospermum. The hardy one, if we look at the leaves here, this is a hardy one. Nothing is a problem for this one. However, I do have some Osteospermum in this bed and it's a different type and they don't survive the winter so well. Oh, this is interesting. I bought this, it's an Aubrecia, as a very little seedling from someone on Facebook Marketplace. It cost a pound. And that was the year before last and it's just getting going now. Now, this is a little light that I bought. Um, that I, I saw it advertised on Facebook and it was £20 for two. I'll put a link down below if I can find them. SPV lights. It shines a dull light all night and then it's got a sensor so when you walk by the lights increase in intensity and it's quite dark here so I've got it next to the path so people don't trip up the path. 
as you can see it's got a solar panel and this solar panel really works one of the few things that you seem to buy that actually works as advertised a couple of fox gloves here self-sewn oh here's a uh I'll see if I can reach it. Oh, I must pull this out. Now this is the scourge of my garden, this uh, weed. It grows everywhere and it fires its uh, seeds. When you pick it up, it's not, uh, it's not ready yet, but if you leave it too late, when you touch it, it fires seeds everywhere. I've forgotten the name of this. I'll see if I can find it. Yeah, those need pulling out all the time. Now here is one of my non-success stories. It's a Daphne. Never had one before. It's been in a number of years. It costs 25 pounds, quite a lot. And it's just not doing anything. And I don't know why. So, in fact, that's as good as it's ever looked, really. I just don't know why. So I'll just have to, I don't know. I'll have to do something with it. And in fact, this Cotinus behind here, I didn't know where to put this. A yeah, smoke bush, but I just love the colour of the leaves. I think it's called Chartreuse. Uh, I can see it's going to flower. I see the flowers just starting there. And it hasn't done so well either this last few years. But it's looking good right now. And just below, we've got the dahlias coming through. Here are the dahlias. Here we are. These are the dahlias. Nice dahlia, this one. I don't lift the dahlias. They stay where they are. I don't even mulch them. I just leave them. And even after that winter we've just had, there we are, growing again. But what hasn't grown quite so well, as you, as you can see here, is the fuchsia. It's hardy, but as we can see, all this has died off. And this normally doesn't... Ha actually, it hasn't died off, has it? Yeah, there's, uh, there's green leaves there. Let's see, oh, there, and there's a leaf there. So when I say died off, it, the, the superstructure's kind of died off, really, but it's growing strongly from the base. So I'm going to take all this superstructure away and let it grow from the beginning right from the base, and it'll also allow me to get in there and weed it. So a lot of plants that you think have died might well not have died, so you have to give them chance, particularly the tropicals, as we'll see in the back garden when we move through in another video. Behind the smoke bush, we've got some more hookera. Yeah, they're looking nice. They do take a little bit of maintenance, I find, but at this time of the year, growing nicely, sending up the flowers. I do like flowers on the hookera. I know some people only have them for the leaves, but I like the leaves and I enjoy the flowers. Just look at that. We can see a lot of seedlings here, all self-sown. So these are marigolds that I'll leave around the place here. Oh, some more hookera here. I've been building up a little bit of a collection of the different colours. And here comes the sun. We've had a lot of rain this last couple of days since I've got home. But it's a nice sunny day today. So let's have a look at this Clematis. I just think it's probably one of the prettiest ones I've got. Look at that. It's an evergreen Clematis. See the leaves there? And it's called avalanche. I like to grow it along the wall where possible. I've got it in a pot. I do feed it and water it a lot. I'd like it to grow further up this wall. Maybe I'll put some more, um, let's see what we've got here. Yeah, here we are. So I've just put in a roll plug here and a little eye and then some wire across here. So I could put another couple of roll plugs up there and have it grow up higher. But the one thing about this Clematis 
is it does seem to want to die back a lot once it's flowered. I've tried doing cuttings and I'm quite successful with clematis cuttings, but not with this. This doesn't take very well in cuttings. In fact, I've never succeeded. And now let's go over to the other clematis I've got. And here we have the clematis. Now it's a Montana and it's growing up a viburnum. And it is so vigorous. I've taken some cuttings and I'll, in fact, because these are growing here, this is where you take cuttings from. I can actually take cuttings anytime. And we'll do some cuttings in a few weeks. There's no rush. I cut this viburnum back to about half two years ago and look at it now, it's back up high again. And the clematis has followed it up. I love to see climbing plants, flowering climbing plants, growing through big shrubs. It's just gorgeous, isn't it? And it's slightly different every year. And there are the little nodding heads of the new flowers to come through. The choicea, which I mentioned a month or two ago, was hit quite hard with the frost. There we are. And it looked rather bad, but just look at it now. It shrugs off frost damage quite easily. Mexican orange blossom. Let's just see if it scents. Mm, not particularly, I don't know why. <laughs> and behind it is a red camellia. I don't feed this, I don't water it, I don't deadhead it. For obvious reasons, it's too big. But just look how lovely and glossy those leaves are. Camellias just look so good when their leaves are nice and glossy. So here we have some big shrubs here to form a nice side to the front garden. Really like that because they're all evergreen. Having a number of evergreen plants in the front garden is quite good. Some people say maybe 30% or 40% of your plants could do with being evergreen in the front garden, which gives it structure and keeps it looking good all year round. Now this one's interesting. Look at the shape of this one. I think I've mentioned it before. I'll just tiptoe through the bed. Now look at the shape of that. Now that's because I brought it from another garden and it was under an oak tree and so had no light from above. So that's how it grew. Facing towards the light, which only came from the side. A deciduous azalea here. I've forgotten the names of these. I, actually, let's have a look. Let's have a look at what it's called. It's called white azalea, that's a white davisii. I'll put it up on the screen, of course, and check it out. But yeah, I decided to put in some nice deciduous azaleas here. That one and this one here. We'll look at those when they're in full flower. I hope you've enjoyed this little look around my English garden in magnificent May. And I'll see you next time in Portee's world. Bye.